All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Surviving Hollywood Podcast. My name is Aaron. My name's Austin. I'm Johnny Ray Diaz. And we were very blessed to have on as a guest today, somebody streaming all the way from Paris, France, coming right to us. It is Saturday Night Live's Jason Sudeikis, his co-star, his co-star. Uh, the actor's name is Stefan Manas, really good guy. So he's on this new show with Jason Sudeikis. They're both in all of the episodes. Uh, it's on Apple TV. Johnny, tell them about this new show. So the show is about um, basically uh, Jason Sudeikis plays a, an American football coach that now coaches a European football team or soccer, as we call it here in America. So this American football coach literally knows nothing about the sport. And now Ted, he's Ted coaching. Lasso. Ted yeah, Lasso. Ted Lasso knows nothing about the sport. And now he's coaching soccer. And it's all based on a uh, NBC promo sketch that came out several years ago where uh, Jason created this character of Ted Lasso, and it actually turned into a whole series on Apple. Which I thought pretty, it was based on an crazy. actual skit that they did on SNL. No, I think it was just a skit for NBC promo. It was like yeah. an NBC promo skit that they, they were using to, to essentially pitch to get more people to watch soccer, basically. Um, but yeah, it's kind of crazy that like this like short sketch, which is hilarious, by the way, if you guys want to check it out online, turn into a full-fledged series on Apple, which I think Jason is, I'm assuming, is producing and writing as well, right? He was a writer, a probably producer. Um, Stefan also talked to us about acting in Bollywood for two to three years, what it's like in that industry, um, as well as composing music for Fast and Furious. So we get the full spectrum. Fast and yeah. Furious 8. It's crazy then, that he was a composer. They, they bought music for that from him. Yeah, I think that was, I thought that was pretty cool. And then um, he also talked about working with a French actor, Vincent Cassell, who's like literally been in like huge blockbuster movies like Oceans 12, 13, Jason Bourne. Um, I mean, just so many different huge movies that this guy's been in. And he worked in a movie recently with him. Um, and he kind of talked about his experience working with him in, uh, in France. So it was pretty cool, man. Some re a really cool dude. And uh, yeah, I think it was, uh, had a lot of fun with it. Gentlemen, yeah. if you guys like, uh, you know, just seeing a cool dude talk about the industry, you guys are gonna like it. Ladies, if you like seeing, you know, uh, a good looking French guy who's searching for the right American word, but you know, is this, is this <laughs> the right way to say it? You're gonna love this episode. It's, uh, things are, you know, America's weird and wild and, you know, uh, half of the people want to follow the protocols and the other half are like, who gives a shit? Yeah, and Johnny's a big Corona denier, so it's been interesting conversing with him. Like, I'm, I'm like, dude, I think it exists, but... I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely not. Um, it, it's definitely real. I have family that works in the, in the health industry, so they, they work in hospitals and they tell me. But uh, yeah, there's half of the people here are like, really like hey we have to take all precautions and the other half are like nope i want to party i want to have a good time and i don't think yeah. it's real it doesn't exist well i mean some they, of them are like i just want to go back to work yeah and that's normal yeah so like they, they just want to yeah, party that's, that's totally fair and i get it we've all been we've been like locked down and we want to get outside and we, i think we do need to start getting to that you know what i mean it's been a long time but i don't know how it is in france are they i, I know you said the government's really are they really trying to control everybody or what's what's going on there um, they're trying to control, they put on lockdown, impose masks to people, but I've been like uh, countries in uh, Eastern Europe, they're making it far, uh, far more, more worse. Sorry, my English is not perfect. I haven't practiced for a while. Nah, like you can great, definitely go in, uh, in jail for 10 years. Uh, if you go out and again and again without a mask, it's like attempt to homicide. And wow. uh, that's Eastern Europe here. The maximum you can go one week in jail and get five thousand uh, dollars euros um, taxes a bill and uh, that's it. But they already did everything. They lock us down. They yeah. cut our job, especially um, nightclubs, restaurants, pubs, and cinema. Uh, yeah. Cinema they didn't forbid us. To, uh, they didn't lock us down, but. Um, the insurance is something quite big here because to make a, um, a movie in here, it's very expensive. We don't have as much money as Hollywood or, or USA, I don't know. And so we need those insurance. And right now the insurance, they won't say, guys, if 
I cannot pay 30 millions if, uh, if your main actor is getting to COVID or die or is incapable of shooting anymore, doesn't want because the condition right. of uh, security is not. Uh, uh, so no insurance will secure anything and we don't have the money to back up like uh, Netflix or whatever. Yeah, so, that, yeah, we, we found it's, it's similar here. I mean, a lot of, a lot, I mean, there's not really a lot. There's really barely any work here at all right now. It's, there's, it doesn't exist right now. Um, I think for the same reason, it's like, you know, the production company doesn't want to take live, you know, responsibility if something happens to yeah. an actor. Actor gets sick and they die, they don't want to get sued. So sure. I think yeah, it's the same, same thing. They're trying to figure yeah. out how can we still work, get back to work while keeping everyone safe and not getting sued, basically. You yeah. know, so I, I think that's, that's, the, that's the hard part. But the cool thing is uh, what, the reason why you're here, you just worked on a show called Ted Lasso uh, with Jason Sudeikis, which is, man, that dude's hilarious. I love Jason. Yeah, and uh, you're in all 10 fan. episodes, it looks like, an IMDb. Like you're working yeah, yeah, right well, with him. I mean, all 10 episodes, uh, I don't have, I'm not in the first or second role. I have a small character, but quite funny here and there. I think uh, Jason and the other, they were casting for for the main characters and maybe they saw me and uh, thanks God the uh, friends world, won the World Cup. And they said, <laughs> okay, maybe we need a little French touch and we can make a lot of joke, joke about it. So, Well, tell nice. us what the show is about because this yeah. is um, based tell off of show, an okay. SNL skit. And, so and now I can tell it, like for the last interviews, I couldn't tell because the show wasn't out, but now, now it is, so I can tell you what it is about. Nice. Uh, well, obviously it's about um, uh, American football coach who become a, a European football, we call it football here, not soccer. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, we call it okay. football. <laughs> a football coach in here in the Premier League, which is uh, the best league ever in, uh, in Europe, and he doesn't know anything about the game, and he's got nothing except envy, and love and team spirits. And uh, he's trying to demonstrate that no matter the rules, no matter what, everything is about the team spirit. And even if his uh, team is not that great, he knows how to push everyone and uh, with joy and love. And even if some player doesn't speak a damn word of English, he knows how to, to make them play and give the best of themselves. So it's obviously hilarious as a uh, character, a person like Jason is playing a first role, uh, he wrote a lot, and uh, I think he was working on this um, on this thing in his head for I think it was in 2013 when he when he created it. So maybe for seven years, and this guy on the set, yeah, first of all, is always smiling, very happy, very respectful. He's, uh, he looks people in the eye, he, he can ex exchange with people, and when he's alone, he's always writing, changing stuff, making stuff better, making stuff better. Like I've been on the show for for some months and uh, and I what is your role always what, writing here what character do you play uh, my character is uh richard monlo is um, a french player playing in the in the team uh, afc richmond um i think i start as a middle field and i end up as a forward player on the left i don't know how to call it it's uh, elie en français it's the same position as mbappe so i'm very happy about that i don't know if you guys follow it did on, you, uh, did, you uh, ha did you play soccer before you got the role or did you know? I, football. Sorry, football. Yeah, yeah football. Sorry. For the American years. audience, did you play soccer? Okay, for the yeah, American okay. audience. Yeah, I'm fine with football. soccer. <laughs> did football, you play football yeah, before? Yeah, okay, we'll call it football. Um, yeah, call you it play, football. Did you, were you playing before you got the role, or how did that happen? Uh, I played football uh, three years when I was quite young. Then I played 10 years on ball. I don't know if you know that. Handball is a, quite a famous sport in here too. It's, uh, it was born in, uh, in Germany. So I played on ball. It's five against five in it's his hand. But here okay. uh, in Europe, in France, Spain, Italy, football is very popular, like very popular, not as much as in Brazil, but it is. So whenever we guys mostly Guys, man, uh, we meet each other as friends to play sports in the weekend. We always play football. In uh, During our vacation, we play football. So I used to play football every month. So I'm not very good, but at least I think I was good enough for the show. Because all the players, all the people who have been cast, I'm telling you, they all have very good football skill. Mm. I mean, it only makes, only makes sense, right? If you're, that's what you're playing. And there, there probably is a lot of footage of people playing on the field. Right. There is, yeah. Of course, there is a lot. There is a can you uh, um, can you tell us real quick about uh, the audition process? How did you go from getting the audition to actually getting on set? What was that like? And where did they shoot the show? Did they shoot it in Europe, or where are they shooting the show? 
Oh, they shot the show in uh, in London, in the art of London. They okay, had to, cool. Uh, they, they didn't, but they rent it. Yeah. Okay. They rent a stadium and the lockers and everything, and uh, it really felt like we were a real team because we're going into a club that let us enjoy the the place, the fields, and we even shot in real stadium like Crystal Palace, like very famous mm -hmm. places. So it was in London, truly. And uh, I've been cast in uh, in France. Actually, I was in Greece at this time, and uh, it's all went by uh, self tapes, okay. three or four ones. I don't remember really. And uh, yeah, they casted me, and maybe they create the uh, my characters when they first saw me, and uh, they confirmed me. And four days later, I was in London starting shooting. Wow, that was quick. That's a quick turnaround. Yes, it was. Yeah, did you do anything uh, yourself to kind of prepare for the role? You know, before, as soon as you found out you got it, you only had four days. What did you kind of well, do? To besides kind of being just a football player, like, are you like the uh, love interest? Are you like the jerk? Like, what is your archetype? The, the jerk? What's yeah. the jerk? Yeah, like a, like a, like a asshole. The asshole. The mean, mean guy. Oh, well, I am. Uh, like the bastard. I'm not a bastard. I think I'm a good guy, but I'm kind <laughs> of stupid because I don't understand what's what the hell is happening? I don't understand football. And there is the captain of the team uh, played by Brett and uh, I forgot his name in the show. And this is the only guy who speaks French. So every time somebody talks to me, he has to do the translation. Ah, oh, nice. And I get excited. So yeah, it's very little uh, French touch here and there. And uh, yeah, small character, quite funny. And uh, thanks God, there's some players who speak French, so they can translate to the coach or to other players. So I can understand what, uh, what's happening actually. I don't understand anything in the show. What, what was it like working with, I know you kind of talked a little bit about it, but what was it like working with Jason? Was he improv with you a lot? Um, kind of talk to us a little bit about your character with his character. Mm, um, you know, it was a, absolutely an insane experience for me. I was very happy. Uh, my character, to be honest, is not that hard to play as is in his own, um, He's a non-life, he doesn't speak English, so he's a little lost here and there, so he's trying to make connection. But here, uh, sometime I got, I got some sentences, some big dialogues, and um, I'm not yet the best actor in the world, and, uh, and Jason is always here when it's not perfect to give you some direction. Maybe you should try this, try that in a very nice way, same as Brendan Hunt, and they all gave us, uh, at least they gave me, some direction here and there to, to get the better of myself and to improve the scene. So this was very nice. The ambience was so positive, always smiling, and I haven't seen any director get angry or the production or even Jason. It's not perfect all the time, and when it wasn't, they just explained to us, let's try to do this better, and in some cuts, it was perfect. So, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, I know that Jason Sudeikis was one of the writers. I think it said he wrote six out of the 10 episodes, but I'm sure he was in the writer's room. How much were you guys sticking to what was written on the page versus going, adding, ad-libbing a little bit, adding some of your own stuff to, to the show? Uh, mm. I didn't really pay attention to all the scripts of everyone. Um, yeah, but for you, for I, you, were you yeah, sticking oh, to the for, page? Like I said, some of my uh, sentences, I speak in French, so... Ah, oh, Stefan, say something in French in that direction. <laughs> I, I really was free. Most of my sentences, oh, say this in French, do what... I, should I say this or that? I, I showed them some, uh, some sentences I was writing down. They told me, hey, you do the best view of the French guy, which was you. 100%. So that was very good and uh, gave me uh, some uh, confidence in my job. So nice. I feel like your characters or your scenes are like the comic relief. It seems like every time your character is, oh, the French guy, you know? It is. Uh, uh, I'm the only French guy in, in it. Oh, there's another, I cannot say. It's not out yet. Uh, <laughs> but he's it's, it's, it's speaking English anyway. So yeah, I'm the only French guy who's always a little lost here and there and has this little French touch. So it's very nice to I think it's very point. It's like uh, when you're making, a, I don't know, a plate or, or something, it's very salty here and there. And uh, it's, it's a nice touch. I think it's a great idea for the show to bring some uh, um, foreign people. There is a uh, crystal who have an amazing character. Oh, it's not here yet. <laughs> Cannot say it. And uh, so I'll talk about it later. Oh. Yeah, it's, that's <laughs> my life. It just came out. And uh, yeah, that's it. Some foreign people are here and there. And uh, crystal is Mexican. And it's, it's going to come later in the show. You'll see. Nice, now, nice. Now, I know you worked in Bollywood for two or three years. Could you describe, how is that acting experience or industry versus London? Um, before the industry, 
it's the last it's a lifestyle okay other i think uh, as a french uh, uk italy uh, spain usa it's kind of the same thing when you move to a country like india first before bollywood uh, the first months are very hard to to handle what you see in the street how you handle with people and after when you get used to it uh, you find a very warm uh, country with warm people and after when you can move to bollywood my english was a disaster at the time so um, i used to have an indian accent i think i think i don't have it anymore if, you are, <laughs> if i have you guys you tell me you don't. And, uh, yeah it was tech light tech light in here I had it. Okay, anyway. <laughs> and uh, yeah, in the body one industry, it's very interesting as there is so many people. You guys already, you know, there's many, many people on the, on the film production, especially in USA, it's very strict, I guess. Uh, everybody's a very specialist, special, a specialist in this stuff. But in Bollywood, there is like, what, what I've, I've lived, 30, 50 people in here standing, just waiting the order of the, of the big guy. And there is this director, I will always remember that. And he had this idea, he wanted a white tree on the set. He said, oh, it could be good to have a white tree in here. And they gave some instruction to the 30 guy and they all left in the city. And 20 minutes later, I don't know where they find a tree, they cut a tree or whatever, a very nice tree that started to paint it. And in 15 minutes, a beautiful white tree was on the set. And I think there is those kind of people who, give, who can give order at the last minutes. And it can be, uh, it can be fulfilled uh, during the same day. And I think in, in USA, France, whatever they have to prepare everything before, and uh, mm. to have last ideas much harder to to provide. I don't know. I'm am I speaking correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, that's interesting. There's yeah. it's it a is. faster faster timeline and pace in India. Yeah, yeah. they get paid uh, well less. You can imagine they don't have that much contract or whatever they get paid at the day right. it's much more cheaper though they can afford to have these 30 people with uh, not much um, knowledge about the job and it's, it's just hands that you can use and it's very interesting also to have this kind of uh, way of thinking how about the audition process in india is it on an actor's that or is it online or in a newspaper magazine pictures <laughs> What? send pictures they just you just send pictures to the director and, uh, and other foreigner of course maybe not as an indian i never had first role or second role i had the i had the role of the foreign of the foreign guy or uh, the good looking guy who was making um the main actress think about her couple or the main actor to to say oh i'm not good enough for my girlfriend so it, it's not that hard to play same thing and uh, so they just look your pictures you speak english you you're polite your French can help a little, so you stay at your place, you, you come on time, you say hello, you speak a little, and that's it, the, the process is very simple. Mm. For the role I had, I don't know about others, of course. Interesting, so it's, it's not, there, was, there wasn't really like a formal audition necessarily. It was not just, for me, no. Yeah, they just kind of no, pick no. you basically from, a, uh, how did they, I'm, I'm curious in the, in the Bollywood industry, how do they treat the actors, are they, are they treating them more like, hey, you're just here to do your thing? And Very you know, nicely. So very nice. nicely. Yeah, so okay. nicely. So respectful. Um, I haven't been to China, but I didn't have very good um, positive feedback from uh, some of my friends actually who have been working in China. You do your job, you're two minutes late at the end of the world. Uh, I've been shooting in Japan too. That It's very cool. You have hours like so much sometimes you you should have 18 hours a day for three days in a row so it's very difficult but in india it's very warm and as i told you there is many many people who are here but with not much knowledge so they just look at you and they're so respectful on the set maybe because you're white you're european uh it's very nice treating what do you want to eat are you sure you want this you want that you want water you want that and the directors they feel happy to have a foreign guy to do his job nicely so um they can they treat you very nicely in india in mumbai i don't know much about delhi in bangalore too it was good in goa too uh, but i know a little india is so big maybe there's different uh, experience here and there and you were you were there for like two two years was it yes two years uh in two in two times um i should have been there for three months just to travel and learn <laughs> english but uh i stayed yeah. there for for a longer time yeah what, what did what did you kind of learn from working over there that you kind of took back with you when you went back to Europe? Um, 
more about the lifestyle. Uh, okay. You know, as French, we we complain a lot. We're never that happy. <laughs> so it's like and, Americans. Uh, we complain a lot too. Uh, I think we are the champion. You complain okay. a lot, but us, when there is nothing to complain, we complain that there is nothing right. to complain. No, you, have, you have no idea. You have no idea. And uh, yeah, I'm French, so I've been born in this and uh, talking about uh, uh, some problem here, some problem there. And when you see how much problems people have in India or can have yeah. or can complain about, and they never complain. One time I was in the street. A guy can give you his shirt because you need it and he has nothing. One time I was in the street and I got caught by the muscle, like in, in one minute, I was so wet and I was going back from job from a shooting day. And this guy in the street, he just gave me his umbrella. Twice I, I lost my wallet in the street with everything on it. And twice somebody took it, look at the, the number, he called me, I said, sir, I think you lost your wallet. And one of the time it was a guy who was living in the street. Wow. Wow, on, that is that is on. crazy. Yeah, no, that is yeah. Crazy. And one time yeah. I left on purpose my smartphone in the in the tuk tuk in the wig shop. Yeah, like those guys that live with ten dollars a day, and they live the day after. I left it on purpose to go to the gym, and I, when I came out, I stayed near to it, and he saw the smartphone directly. He called sir, and sir, your smartphone. You were testing them. Yeah, but wow. perfect. You're, Change changes your perspective, though, right? That's uh, cool. Life perspective, yeah. So when I came back to France, I had some fight with uh, with family, with friends who were complaining a lot. Please, guys, yeah. I know it's difficult when you haven't lived it. I had this chance, and many people they don't need it. They're naturally like this. I wasn't. So for me, it was a big shock to see. Oh man, I, I'm. I wasn't very nice. Maybe with people, or with myself, or with the the government, or with life in general. So you learn right. how to appreciate a little more. That's really cool. Who are your uh, acting and filmmaking inspirations? Like, who do you want to like model yourself after? Or like, uh, man, I wish I could, you know, do some of the stuff they've been able to do in their career. Um, movie I loved, and uh, maybe somebody I, I try to rely a little is, uh, is Tom Cruise because I don't know. Maybe I look a little like him, and I love action movie. Uh, I did a lot of sports in my career. I'm still practicing martial arts and stunts. So yeah, playing a uh, Mission Impossible is kind of a dream for me. But there is a little to take here and there as an actor. Actor skills, they're all amazing. Like all the best, like DiCaprio, Nicholson, uh, and many French guys. They're quite amazing. So, uh, what is not to like about their career? I don't know them in person. I don't know what they do in their personal life. But as professional, many actresses and actors, uh, they all are insane. And and uh, people that we make laugh now, uh, like Jean Claude Van Damme, a little is a uh, yeah. Uh, he's very I, famous. I, I love but that guy. We, many people love him. But big big in fan. France, okay. In France, we make fun of him a little because sure. he's speaking. And uh, I had the chance to spend a weekend with him. Okay. And the guy is just so nice. He's on. The guy is huge. Okay. So when he's talking to people, everybody's like that. And he was in a very important. I was like this too. He checked me. We talk about sports and and martial arts. He was very nice. And he was having this meeting with a with a producer. Um, and he got a call from his mother and said, hey, stop everything, my mother is calling me. And he has his, his family before everything. Mm. And he, uh, I know he's underling a lot of, um, uh, how do you call that? Association Environment in Australia. Oh, really and, cool. Uh, he's giving a lot of money for this kind of associ association for, for forest. And uh, the guy is very nice. The guy is so nice. And uh, yeah, I try to, I'm trying to be nice too, and on my own level. So. And I know you just, you uh, recently worked with, uh, I mean, a very famous French actor, Vincent Cassell, uh, who's a fantastic, oh, yeah. fantastic actor. Um, I, I mean, maybe you can kind of fill us in because we obviously know him from a lot of American movies. He's, he's made a big crossover here totally. yep. to huge movies here. And, um, you know, in France, how is he regarded? Is he regarded as a icon or is he, you know, how does he, how is he viewed? Yeah, it was last year. I had uh, some days with him. It was quite amazing. Uh, same, the guy is so nice. Uh, when I met him, he told me, I don't know if I can say that, if he's going to see it, he's maybe gonna, not going to be happy. But, but I was so impressed to see him in person. And, and uh, I came to him and I don't know, I, I think I'm going to shake his hand. And the guy said, uh, oh, nice to meet you. My name is, uh, is uh, Vincent. Uh, it wasn't a joke. He introduced himself to me last year. 
Yeah, I know many of us. Come on, and uh, the guys is very. It's so nice. It's so nice. It's very simple, and uh, and when he get on on set, he's like <clears throat> he's getting in his character, and it's very impressive to see. And uh, in France, he's quite famous. Uh, he became famous with the movie La Haine. I don't know if it has been if it has been translated to English, but it was like a massive bomb, like what you see. But um, La Haine means now uh, the anger. This deep anger anxiety that you want to kill people or to express out and you just discuss the entire world and you want to destroy everything and in this movie his face is it's just amazing and he gave the one of the best uh, acting performance i think uh, playing uh, uh, merin uh, merin is like uh, was a number one Baddest guy. I don't know what to say. How to say mm. that in the seventies? I forgot. Uh, but it's an amazing movie if you can uh, watch it. Uh, what's, Merin, what's the movie? What's the movie called? Uh, Mesrin, l'ennemi public numéro un. Jacques Merin, uh, Jack like Jackis, if I say it in the English way. Okay. And Merin, M R M E R S E N E. Uh, Jacques Merin is two okay. um, two movies amazing. It's it's amazing. It can blow mm. you away. And uh, yeah, so the guy is amazing. He's still a, quite famous here now that French people uh, spend a lot of time on a uh, streaming platform, Apple TV, Netflix and everything. Everybody's uh, amazed to see him in um, Westworld, the third season. And uh, yeah, he's quite a, he's a star here. Was, was there anything working with him that any advice that he maybe gave you or did he kind of just keep to himself or, you know, what was... Mm, not that much. Uh, my scene was then that hard, same um, same as before. Okay. My lines were quite easy. Maybe I did it well in the first try. So no, he's focusing his character and he's thinking about everything. You know, when you reach a certain level of actor, I think they speak, they're thinking about the camera, this, the dialogues. They have much more to think than uh, simple stuff, I think. Sure, sure. Uh, one question we always like to ask our actor guests is how did you get your first agent and do you have agents in multiple countries or just France? Oh, okay, uh, interesting question. Mm, I started acted, um, acting very late, uh, still when I was uh, doing my uh, marketing school in third year. So I started acting in a, in a TV show in France. So the producer of this TV show who sold me and get me in the show, just, I, I know an agent is gonna be your agent. So I switched agent many times in French. And how I get my agent who got me Ted Lasso is very, it's a nice story. Um, two years ago, I got in a student film. Uh, we've been awarded like 20 times and I've been awarded four or five times as the best actor all in the USA festival. So it was the first big hit for me. Uh, the director is a student. Uh, his name is Artem Gutwoski and the movie is out of frame. So it was very good for me. And thanks to that, I've been... Um, uh, invited to the Cannes Festival for the first time I've, I've been there. And uh, I went there, but I didn't have anything to show. And many people, you know, Parisian guy, they don't push you that much. They said, oh, you shouldn't go. You have nothing to show. You just embarrass yourself. And I said, okay, anyway, I'm going to go. So I don't care. And I went there and I had an agent at the time. And uh, he or she, I'm not going to give any name. He or she told me, Oh, Stephen, you haven't done much this year and you have nothing to present. So I'm not going to present you to anyone because it's going to make me embarrassed. That's my, what, that's what my agent told me. And I was very um, pissed off. Can I, how can I tell yeah. this? In the, okay, I was, not, I was not happy about that. So I left, uh, I left, left, I left the, uh, the agency the very same day. And two days after, I met this guy. He was in a, he's, in, he's my agent right now. His name is Alain. Uh, the agency is uh, Lucky Star. And he's Belgium. And he was in the Cannes Festival. In, uh, I told him about my problem I had in the French market so far. Then I couldn't go through. And, um, and he told me, man, that's simple. For now, on this market, you have an international profile. You're more an American profile or UK profile than French. Uh, luckily, you speak a little of English. It's not perfect, but still. And uh, this guy is promoting only in the, on the inter international level. He's only doing international casting. So I said, okay, let's give it a try. And he told me, okay, let's have a try. And uh, once, one le once months later, the first casting I had with him was Ted Lasso. Was it That's what? It. Ted Lasso. Was Ted Lasso, yeah. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, the wow. TV stuff, yeah. So this guy's the right guy. Yeah. It is. So far it is. Very good. Yeah. First casting, Ted Lasso, perfection. Wow. Very happy. <laughs> so, so he's like, you better get every single one after that because, uh, <laughs> no. Um, and then also, you know, uh, 
you know, we kind of, we kind of touched on the acting side, but, um, from what we've been told that you actually compose music. Yeah. Um, true. and now, uh, tell us a little bit about your background with, uh, with music and then also, could you play heard... something if you have a piano? I don't know if you buy a piano, <laughs> but I have a piano in my home. No, I don't have, uh, I don't have my piano here. Right. Uh, I started, we... I studied, okay, I'm going to tell you if you want. Sure. I studied music very young. I didn't like it, uh, but the parents pushed me. Ah, you have to play music. And I, I lived in a very small town. So uh, I had to play in just one way. It's the orchestra. We have an orchestra of 60 musicians, 60, 70, I forgot. Um, and they were only plays for clarinet. So I had to play clarinet. I studied uh, at seven years old, I think. So I played clarinet classical in this uh, classical orchestra till my 16s. Uh, so clarinet, 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 Mozart and everything. And after that, I played saxophone. I built uh, a jazz band. Uh, very good. It was nice, twice a week. And uh, after at 18, I saw the movie. Uh, I'm at, I started to fall in love with acting and try to think, okay, maybe it's going to be my career because I really loved acting. And uh, I've, saw, I've seen the movie um, Mozart, Amadeus. I don't know if you have seen it. but Amadeus, yeah. Yeah, Amadeus. Great yeah. movie. Uh, how can you not want to play piano if you see that? Uh, mm. So I've seen it when I was 17. So um, I just bought a piano. And I, I remember I played for two years, one hour every morning, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. before going to school. I fall in love with piano. So I'm not a great piano player, but I, I know a little about it. And uh, <clears throat> around 23, I couldn't go through enough in acting. And uh, I met a friend of mine uh, who's a producer and said, ah, Stephen, I know you play music. Maybe you can, you can compose a little. And I didn't know how to compose anything. It was very complicated. Ableton, Sonar, and uh, Cubase and uh, all this stuff was so complicated for me. And one of my best friends, I learned that he composed a lot. So I, I went to see him in Lyon. He showed me how it's working and it's quite amazing. <coughs> Sorry. And when you have this headphone and a piano and you play it and you can hear, I don't know, an orchestra of 100, 100 orchestra playing at your fingers, like strings and everything. Uh, it's, it's really amazing what we can do now. So I stayed one week with him and he taught me how to do it. And uh, we create this very small production together. And I proposed some song simple songs, speak it, uh, pizzicato at first, and he bought them all uh, at the production for uh, the first documentary I've done uh, for Fast and Furious 8. And after that, I'm still composing. It's on the sound, it's sound. But go back, go back to that, Fast and Furious uh, 8. So somebody bought a song yeah. for Fast and Furious 8. It is uh, my friend's producer, and uh, he was producing this uh, documentary for Fast and Furious 8. And he said, if you can give me some good song, uh, I'm going to get it, pizzicato. So when the the main actor are, are talking. You need a very nice song in the, in the back, you know, when string are uh, doing pizzicato. And I've composed a little of uh, EDM music and uh, dubstep for for the cars racing, stuff like this. Mm. Small small song here and there, but I think I composed like 25 and uh, he got them all and it was a, a good start. And now I'm composing only uh, mostly epic music like Inception, Pirate of the Caribbean, uh, stuff very strong, okay. So how many of your songs were in Fast and Furious 8? One or? I don't know. Many? Ten, no. Ten? It's, it's very small. It's not like right. three minutes. Right, it's, like, it's like sections. Yeah, 10 seconds, 25 seconds. They, yeah. they pick a little here and there. And then. That's still a really, I mean, that's still really cool to be able to have your, your songs put into, you know, a huge yeah, it was cool. movie like that. I mean, yeah, you're acting all cool, but you must be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's more easy to compose because uh, I cannot perform anymore. I used to perform a lot uh, with clarinet, with my saxophone. In, I don't have the skills at all in piano, not even in saxophone anymore. So when you take your time at home, you can move uh, the notes well, like, here and cl there. Cl take clarinet your time. clarinet and, and saxophone yeah. is one thing, but you're only playing in like... The melody or, or treble clef to be able to like score True. something you need True. to like yeah. be able to know yeah. music theory and stuff right um or just know it sounds good innately you just need to know more than just playing clarinet is you know what i'm saying uh, uh, clarinet is very hard to play it's uh, it's, it's hard uh, but like to score a movie is different you know it is it is uh it depends what kind of score if you if you want to score a, a jazz stuff it's so hard and and sometimes i'm listening to some uh, score or course how do you call it scores and so, sometimes it's quite easy because they use the same uh, uh, chords and uh, it can be easy or difficult but i understand what you're saying uh, you are you need more knowledge um, to compose for sure you need to to need to have some knowledge that on saxophone it can be okay people can say oh my god he's an amazing player and he played only three years 
He said, no, it's not that great. And sometimes- yeah, I mean, you... Imagine if uh, The Rock in Fast and Furious 8 just had a saxophone behind him. You need more than just a sax. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe just a little triangle just ding, yeah, just yeah. the whole it's time. A, They'd be like, I don't know if that's gonna really work. It's not gonna really work for this scene. Uh, but that's really yeah, cool. That's that's the congratulations on on that, obviously, and um, uh, thank that you means guys. you're doing some really some really good work. Um, in the last couple minutes that that we have left, um, you know, uh, I guess to kind of tell us now that you've you've worked on this show, and I know it's it's coming out right this I think Friday, right? It's coming out Friday. Came out last uh, last week. Last last week. Okay. Yeah, I'm the first amazing. two episodes, and it's coming out. A little, a little what more, network? What network? Okay. Apple to Apple Plus. Apple TV. Apple, Apple Apple TV. Plus, yeah. yeah um what's what's next for you are you planning on staying in france and kind of working there or do you ever plan on coming to the to america what what i had many plans uh due to covid 19 everything has been cancelled sure uh i've never been to usa thanks to this show uh, i could afford uh for the first time to travel to expensive places like usa i've been invited to usa in three festivals as i won against three awards so I should have been to uh, to those amazing city uh, like uh, Los Angeles, uh, Miami, and and New York, all been cancelled in uh, March and April. So right now I have to stay in France a little. We have to wait that the jump can come out a little. I have a project in Mumbai, and uh, and the most important thing right now is uh, is a Ted Lasso season two. I don't know if I'm going to be in it or not, but I really hope for them that it's going to happen because it's going to mean it's a success. How sure and do you I, think? Do you think it's like pretty sure it's going to be season two? Or I have no idea. Uh, I'm not in the. I'm not a production guy. They have I would. To I would think money. so. I think. I think yeah, there will I, be. They're, they're probably. They're, I think there will be. Yeah. It's a good show. Uh, I've watched some I reviews hear. and uh, they're very good so far yeah. and people are happy. Uh, we miss sports. We didn't have that much uh, football and, uh, and uh, I think it's a good thing to talk about football. If you don't like Jason Sudeikis, I don't know who's, who you're going to like as a, as a comedy guy. So everything's yeah. perfect. The realization yeah. is good. Uh, the directing, sorry. Here we say realizator instead of directing. So it's the opposite, it's the opposite in, in French. Mm. So yeah, the director were insane and uh, the image looked great. And uh, so yeah, uh, I really hope it's going to be a season two. Cool. That's um, <laughs> I guess, Stefan, where can our audience find you? Are you on social media? Yeah, um, a little. I mean, Instagram, Stephen Manas, and on st uh, Facebook page, Stephen Manas. I'm not only uh, much well, what, anymore, Whatever you want to plug, whatever you want to plug, you know? Yeah, Stephen Manas uh, on uh, Instagram is okay, but I'm not um, um, a social media guy who's 24-7 yeah, yeah. to, to, to his phone. I used to be in India because it is a condition to get jobs. And I hang out with guys, with girls who have two phones and you know, Instagram. And I, I don't think it's very healthy to be too much on it. So I'm going to tell you, I'll share That's a good thing. Yeah. That's yeah. a good thing. I don't know if you guys are on it, but it's chronophage. And at the end of the day, sometimes you spend four hours on it and say, man, I could have walked out, I could have played music, I could have done many stuff. I didn't mean to so, trigger your uh, <laughs> strong feelings in social media. It's just, uh, you know, maybe you have a Sorry. website or something. <laughs> I got a website, uh, stephanmanas.com. I got a website. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, you can reach me out there or on Instagram, it's fine, but I just don't want people to have to have story of me every day of what I've eaten. Right, right. It's I'm okay. Sure. Our, our audience not only wants to go subscribe to you, but they also have, you know, just low expectations generally you post a picture once every couple of weeks they're they're, they're fine yes a uh, couple of weeks yeah um well last last question i just wanted to ask you real quick uh the film out of frame um is there anywhere where we could possibly see that because you said it's in festivals right is that what yes the, uh, that was the award a trailer on imdb i don't know if the director unlocked it uh, totally uh, okay. no i don't think it's still going uh, through festival it's going okay. to dubai uh, very soon so Okay. No, I'm sorry. You can only see the trailer on the IMDb. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, uh, guys. I'm very happy. It was great. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Hope to see you again. It, let us know when you're in LA. We'll be watching yeah, the show. And you're, next time you're in LA, hopefully we can do this in person. We can sure. do it Tell again. me where I, can, where I can follow you. Are you more Instagram or Facebook? Or we'll, we'll follow you on Instagram and then you can follow us back. Yeah. I'll follow you back. Okay. Yeah.